history. 42 years ago, in fact, when I was in sixth grade and four years from having my first gray hair, my mother came to me and said, would you like to go to the library and try an event? So I said, sure. And I went to Henry Ford Centennial Library here in Dearborn and played my first ever game of Dungeons and Dragons, a role-playing game. For those not familiar with role-playing games or Dungeons and Dragons, it's a game of collaborative storytelling, or as we called it when we were little, make-believe. Except that you have one person who controls the whole world called the Game Master, and everybody else is a player playing a key person in the narrative. You have books that define the rules of the game, and you use dice to create random effects to find out what happens when you try something. And these dice are in many fun shapes and colors. The question is though, how does this have anything to do with Toastmasters? Well, the answer is it has everything to do with Toastmasters. If somebody's a game master, they're going to present planned descriptions or narratives of what the players see. Those players are gonna give improvisational responses and the GM provides improvisational responses back to the players. Listening is a key skill because you have to understand not only what people are saying, but in the context of their characters and in the whole narrative as a whole. As you speak, you wanna use good vocal variety and interesting word choices to keep everything interesting. You wanna work as a team because it is a collaborative story. You wanna make sure that you're aware of time, giving each person a share of time and making sure that you can get through a whole arc in the three to six hours that one normally sits down to play. And perhaps most importantly, people need to feel free to try things out of their comfort zone and not worry too much about whether or not it works. This is a tick list of Toastmaster skills. Everything I just mentioned, prepared speeches, non-prepared speeches, listening, vocal variety, working as a team, getting out of your comfort zone. In fact, it's so important that I was going to make a podcast of how to use Toastmaster skills to be a better role player. But instead, I found a club in California called Dungeons and Toast that was just forming, the first ever club for role players. So I joined that club and you would not believe how dynamic and energetic and fun the club is. People come together and do table topics that are collaborative storytelling, competitive storytelling, or opportunities for role play or opportunities to just vibe about some bizarre topic and everybody has fun. The speeches don't have to be about role playing, but they almost always are. Whether it's how to be a better game master, how it's to be a better player, how to be a better world builder, because those whole worlds you play in, someone's got to create them. And so that's a whole hobby of its own. Even the roles in that club, the structure is exactly what you'd expect. Prepared speeches, non-prepared speeches, evaluations. But we've assigned fun names to some of the functionaries. For example, you're not the timer, you're the sorcerer of time. You're not the ah counter, you're the wizard of Oz. And you're not the grammarian, you are the cleric of rhetoric. All of these roles are exactly what you'd expect, but they just add an element of fun. As the VPE though, I'm looking to make these things more educational. Some people are there to be world builders. Some are there to be game masters, players, Twitch streamers, bloggers, or podcasters, or voice actors. Each of these skills are very synergistic with the whole idea of Toastmasters and role-playing. And so what I'm doing is I'm going through the process 
of identifying what skills do people want, what paths might they choose, what projects within those paths, especially at three, four, and five, where you have optional paths, and even for the standard projects, how do you get more value out of those projects against the skills you want to learn? Because Toastmasters is very much something where the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Fellow Toastmasters, I've given you what to me is a treasure trove of valuable insights on how to turn something that I care about into an opportunity to bring Toastmasters in as a skill. I hope that even if you've never played a role-playing game in your life, you're able to take these Toastmaster skills and my lessons and take them back to your own hobbies or to your own church affiliations or to your own friendship affiliations. But even if you can't, I hope you've enjoyed my two copper pieces worth of insight as much as I've enjoyed sharing it with you. Madam Toastmaster. That was quite an interesting way to tie the games to the Toastmaster. I really enjoyed it, Greg. Thank you.